session of this conference and um, both next talks will be presented by the same person Nikola Ljubesic and he will explain about the first talk um, <clears throat> which is uh, titled from Mao to keyboard the place of non-canonical written and spoken structures in lexicography mm -hmm. thank you Simon so as you already heard, I'm neither Anna nor Daria, but Nicola. And I will be presenting their work because they weren't able to attend this conference this time. Uh, this work is one of the first linguistic results of the Yanis project, which is a three-year national project uh, from Slovenia, dealing with non-standard language uh, in online communication. I'm part of it as well. as as part of the second group from the Jordan Stefan Institute. So we are more dealing with the technical part of the project, collecting corpora and processing them in ways like standardizing non-standard text, uh, more syntactically taking non-standard text, etc. And the colleagues from the Faculty of uh, Arts are mostly doing the linguistic analysis which comes after and before some technical parts. So just to give you uh, a motivation for this uh, talk, so the colleagues have started from the stereotype, which we all probably share, that computer-mediated communication is a hybrid between spoken and written language. And actually, they want to re-examine this stereotype in this uh, part of research. So they ask two main questions. The first one, being uh, what are the main similarities and differences between typical spoken and typical uh, computer-mediated communication uh, structures. And the second question, which is rather an open one, left out for everyone to discuss later on probably, which is how should these typical structures of informal spoken and written journals be included in dictionaries? Regarding the methodology of their work, so what they do is they identify features uh, specific for spoken language with respect to standard written communication. This is what they do first, and they do it by using the sketch engine and its keyword list feature by uh, using a spoken language, a language corpus and a written uh, balanced uh, corpus as a reference corpus. And then they uh, leave out the 200 top ranking keywords and they examine them for uh, specific features. They do the same with the CMC corpus. So they are looking for features specific for CMC communication with respect to standard written communication. And at the end, having specific features of spoken language and specific features of CMC language, they look for the, they do an analysis of spoken language features in computer mediated communication. Furthermore, they also investigate uh, computer mediated communication features among different genres of CMC. So, this is the main methodological approach. Regarding the data sets uh, my colleagues use, uh, as the data set representative of the written uh, language, I use the CRES, CRES corpus, which is a balanced corpus um, formed from the um, uh, GigaFida corpus, if I'm not uh, mistaken. It's 100 million tokens in size and contains equal proportions of literary, nonfiction, and newspaper and internet texts. Uh, regarding spoken communication, they use the GOS corpus, which is a transcript of 120 hours of spontaneous private and public speech and is 1 million tokens in size. 
Uh, and for computer mediated communication, they used the recently built and yet not finished Janes Corpus, uh, which is yeah, called as the same as the project and contains tweets, forum posts, news comments, and blogs collected from the Slovene web. And it's 160 million tokens in size. Uh, this corpus, because I know a little bit about that more than about the rest of the work, uh, was besides being collected, it was also um, automatically normalized by using a com um, character level statistical machine, trans machine translation procedure and was also uh, classified uh, as being standard or non standard by uh, machine learning, uh, by, with a machine learning approach. And we will continue on enriching it in primarily with primarily <laughs> linguistic features. To come back to uh, my colleague's work, um, so what they did, they had the 200 uh, keywords of uh, taken from the spoken uh, corpus with respect to the written corpus and the 200 features from, uh, sorry, keywords from the CMC corpus. And first what they did on each of those two, they categorized each word as being standard or non-standard so that they can focus on the non-standard vocabulary. Later on, they were looking for a structure for a classification schema in the non-standard vocabulary, and they came up with this 10-level uh, annotation schema uh, consisting of phonetic spelling, diacritic submission, abbreviation, discourse marker, interaction, informal expression, medium-specific expression, topic-related expression, non-standard tokenization, and foreign expression. So, at that point, they have classified each of the, these non-canonical tokens into one of these 10 categories. To come to the results they have obtained with this analysis and previously explained methodology, uh, first, the first insight they did is in the amount of standard vocabulary among those 200 keywords. As you can see, the GUS, so the corpus of spoken Slovene, uh, lies somewhere in between all those three uh, genres of computer mediated communication, which could lead us to an assumption or maybe even a conclusion that uh, spoken language is actually not less standard than computer mediated communication, but somewhere in between. Uh, regarding the specific uh, genres of, uh, or types of computer-mediated communication, FORA are the most standard, this, these data would uh, tell, and tweets are the least standard. Uh, to go over to specific features or to those 10 categories they mm, have defined, so here they show the five um, features that are distinctive uh, uh, for the spoken language elements and are occurring in the computer mediated communication as well. So as you, uh, the blue color um, is the Gos Corpus, uh, red is Fora, uh, green is Tweets, and um, the last color, whatever this is, Lila, is comments. Just for you outside, uh, in back there who can't probably see it. So as you can see, uh, the most uh, prominent category is actually the pronunciation category. So uh, in all types of communication expect com except comments uh, among the non-standard forms that are being presented here, uh, the pronunciation or the uh, phoneticized spelling of words is the most uh, frequent category. Uh, and in this category, um, uh, tweets are actually the most similar to the uh, GOS written corpus, uh, uh, sorry, spoken corpus, uh, having uh, the highest amount of um, non-standard words being actually uh, uh, phoneticized. Uh, the second category is interaction, where we do not see any big uh, changes, but overall we, can con we could conclude that uh, in this case GOS so the corpus of uh, spoken Slovene and the Twitter corpus show the tweets and spoken language uh, are more similar than the rest. 
regarding the elements that are specific only for the CMC communication, like diacritics, uh, medium specific uh, terms like to like, ušečkati in Slovene, sounds quite funny, uh, tokenization uh, problems or um, uh, errors, abbreviation and topic. We can see that the only prominent category is actually the topic category in which, uh, so those are topic specific terms that uh, do not uh, occur in uh, spoken language, at least not in the gloss corpus. Uh, that fora and comments are the most strongest categories here, tweets as we would expect, not so much. Regarding the remaining four, four categories, they are not, uh, so mo all of them are below 5%, which makes actually sense because all those phenomena are actually dispersed among uh, the whole um, lexic, non-standard lexic, not just the top 200 keywords with respect to uh, standard written language corpus. Mm, to go over to a discussion, so the main question is, do we write the way we speak? And what the uh, researchers have come to is that uh, the spoken language feature, which is not, uh, uh, which is not prominent or not uh, there in CMC at, at all, are of course hesitation marks like E and M, and there's a simple explanation for that. So in spoken discourse, we do simultaneously planning and uttering. So almost no one uses this in written speech. Regarding the spoken elements that are part of the computer media communication, uh, the first one is phonetic spelling. So uh, when we uh, phoneticize the language, this is used vastly both in uh, spoken language and uh, in CMC. And the most prominent uh, uh, type of CMC here is Twitter. Uh, regarding interaction expressions, uh, those are also quite um, um, prominent in both uh, types of communication and among all data sets. And uh, informal expressions are mostly uh, to be found in Twitter data. Uh, and finally, regarding the CMC features, so the features that are not uh, to be found in spoken language. The topic related vocabulary is of course uh, mostly prominent on fora and the medium related vocabulary as one would expect is also to be found uh, much more there and in this case they are found on comments. I will have to comment that, uh, comment on that with my uh, 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 colleagues and see whether maybe this is also a problem of pre-processing the data because the medium related vocabulary should at some point be also uh, excluded, at least this um, boilerplate which shouldn't be part of the corpus. Uh, so to conclude, uh, the goal of my colleague wa colleagues was to better understand the circumstances which lead to the use of spoken elements in informal written texts. And what they propose furthermore is a more systematic uh, methodology of I for identifying new linguistic structures in uh, CMC and spoken language. And their conclusion or an open question uh, for all of you would be uh, lexicographers need to re-examine the treatment of the elements that spoken discourse and the language of CMC have in common in contemporary dictionaries. So that would be it. Thank you. Uh, the qu questions and comments can be primarily uh, sent to Anna, but I'm more than open to have a discussion uh, right now as well. Thank you. Thank you. Questions? If you could please go back to the slide of percentage of uh, non-standard elements. Uh, no, the previous one. Oh, the next one, yeah. Before, before, before this. Ah, sorry. This, this yeah, one, sorry, yes, sorry, yes, yeah, percentage. Yeah, okay, I, I'm curious. Well, I'm interested in knowing what's the variation because I expect that some, let's say, fora have bigger uh, amount of standard language and some of them are uh, very lower. So if you know about mm -hmm. it, anything. Um, I don't think that uh, my colleagues have looked into that. 
Actually, the fora they are using, uh, the, the fora that are currently in the Yannis Corpus are rather topic specific. So there's a forum about uh, automobilism and another one about science and there's a general forum as well. But this should be investigated for furthermore. So this differentiating between the general forum and uh, the uh, topic specific one. Uh, will you please uh, tell something about the normalization uh, of the uh, data mm -hmm. in the process of uh, mm -hmm. morphosyntactic annotation? Uh -huh. uh, did you do any evaluation of what was the success of, of this normalization? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We did. So uh, the plan for the year three of the project is to build uh, to, uh, um, taggers and parsers that are able to deal with non-standard language. But in the first year, while we were preparing the corpus for the language to be used in the second year of the project, um, we actually had to go the other way around, so normalizing text and then using standard tools that were already available for Slovene to annotate uh, the corpora. Regarding the normalization procedure, we used a very simple uh, approach. So we just used MOSES, so a system for statistical machine translation. And we actually uh, considered standard and non-standard text as being just two languages. We divided it into characters because obviously the uh, differences are not on the, mostly not on the token, but on the uh, character level. And then we just translated the non-standard text into standard text uh, by training the system on some manually uh, normalized data. And this worked very, very well. I don't recall the figures. This was in 2014. Uh, and regarding the annot uh, annotation, so it suffers, of course, because still the syntactic structure did not change because we actually translate word for word. So we sometimes we, we do conflate two words into one and the opposite, but we never change the order of words. So it's still far away from any newspaper corpora uh, text on which most of the systems are trained on. So I, my assumption would be that with, uh, if, I, uh, understand, if I remember well, uh, on morphosyntactic description, we are around 85%. So much uh, lower than on standard language where Slovenia is at 93% roughly. And in year three, we will yeah, follow the work that has been done right now, probably by using clustering to find non-standard terms that belong to the standard terms. Uh, adding that to the uh, pro decision process and then being able to tag non-standard text without any prior, prior normalization. Any, any more questions? Well, a, a short ling linguistic one. Um, one might wonder if um, you find different vocabulary such as neologisms or substandard words. Uh, are there any studies made about this? If CMC generates you some new insights about well, words that are otherwise difficult to find in the standard corpora? Mm -hmm. So yeah, this will be more question for my colleagues, but uh, I know that they plan to study neologisms and uh, uh, sense shifts inside the uh, non-standard language, but this will be done in a later phase. So this is one of the first insi linguistic insights in the data collected. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? No? Then thank you again. Oh, thank you. And. Yeah. <laughs>